All right, so we're just stacking up some some edible plants. Don't want them to get wind burned, so I'm putting them in there. I've got one back here that didn't quite fit. Hanging out here at this organic farm nursery place. We just did a class, and previously, earlier this week, I was not a fan of aquaponics. This guy has built a system that is very, very simple, and it seems to work, and it's all set up Anyway, this place is just, I mean, it's absolutely incredible. These are some big fish farm tanks that he's he's got working here. Lots of tilapia. To my understanding, and I'm a total rookie noob at aquaponics, but I'm warming up to the idea because one, I want the fertilizer aspect of it. What's up guys? What's up buddy? Uh, so one, I want the fertilizer. So I'm literally in it for the, I'm, I'm, I'm in it for the shit. All right. And then number two, I kind of want the dead fish carcasses to do, to put underneath my plants. Just like the Native Americans in the Pilgrim story. That's it's like how you get, how you get banging plants. And then three, the idea of having, knowing where my fish comes from and not because I don't really want store-bought stuff at this point. Like we don't buy tilapia for that reason. And I do have a pond, but I don't want to put tilapia in there because they can be super invasive and dominate everything in there. But I'm warming up to the idea of actually doing an aquaponics situation because you can feed so many people on such a small bit of uh of ground and the way that the doctor has it figured out he he's really got the doc has it figured out he's got it dialed in and uh and he's he has a trial and error to fit to he has the stories of like the <laughs> of success and uh and i love how he's just he's got everything at this point in time just completely dialed in he's got strawberries happening tomatoes just it's so abundant bunch of jackfruit bunch of baby jackfruit happened in there i've got jackfruit this guy anyway just absolutely amazing passion vine he sells this juice here like it's just that's just how i want to eat if i eat food i want to be eating food that i grow or my buddies grow and uh and then i don't have to worry about social credit score because i got a feeling i'm gonna have a pretty low social credit score when the time comes like how government compliant are you? Not very, not very. So probably need to be growing my own food anyway because it was only a matter of time before, you know, they're like, yeah, Trev, you just can't partake and you can't buy or sell without the mark of the beast, my man. And like, well, it's okay, I'll pass. <clears throat> Every time I, I throw out a number of how many things grow in Florida, like naturally or, or will, will grow well in Florida, it always is understated. When I come to a place like this, I'm like, how many varieties of stuff do you guys have? And they're like, oh, hundreds and hundreds. And I'm like, wow, it's like endless. But he's got this whole educational thing going on, all run by volunteers. They're open one day a week. This is moringa trees. It's like literally like the superfood of superfoods of superfoods. It's... It's got row like all sorts of just rows of all different things. I mean, almost no bugs. Everything's super super organic. It's got just endless amounts of uh, of trees. Fifty varieties of mango, which is kind of rough because, like for me, <laughs> I can't I can't make up my mind on how many or, or different types I wanted. I got these. These are amazing cranberry hibiscus. There's tons of them. Got chickens out here. His eggs are a totally different color than any other eggs I've seen because his chickens are pasture raised. Gave us the whole rundown in his classroom here, his outdoor classroom. Those are his aquaponic systems. We'll try to sneak in there and take a shot of that. Just trees and trees and trees. Really, really incredible. I mean, just varieties I can't even pronounce. And uh, this is the aquaponic system that he's got here. Getting the waste out of an aquaponic system is the biggest problem. And anyway, that turns into a fish or that fish poop is essentially what he uses in his soil containers, which are food grade IBC totes. 
there's a fertilizer shortage. It's not going to affect this farm whatsoever. They don't use fertilizer. This is all floating plants grown in net pots, very similar to my hydro tank videos if you've seen those. And <clears throat> it's just hooked into this aquaponics system. You can go up to six different grow bins and it'll literally feed an entire family here on what he can grow aquaponically. But it's just amazing. Here's a tilapia. <clears throat> of course, a tilapia, hey doc. Of course, the tilapia are, uh, are something that when you clean them, you could, uh, oh, you do, throw them into your, your row gardens. And what's unique about this, and I was talking with a big YouTuber through comments on his video, the Millennial Farmer, almost a million sub channel. And I was like, hey, why are you guys still doing monoculture farming at this point in the game? And he's like, well, that's what the market, that's what the market demands. And I'm like, eh, I don't know if having like 600 acres of corn spraying Roundup over 600 acres is like a good idea. And so I asked him about what their organic uh, makeup of their soil was. And he goes, it's almost, it's, it's pretty good. It's, it's almost, it's almost 5%. I was like, oh, uh, I was expecting more like 95%. But, <laughs> but nonetheless, this just like intercropped with all the different varieties of everything on a drip line. It, you just you you have less pest problems if you're going to grow in the soil. But the benefit to doing hydroponics, which I didn't believe in previously, but he's really figured out a way to get the solid wastes out, and that's an issue with hydroponics because if you ever lose power or anything on that system, it seems super awesome, but you lose everything immediately. And so people that are really into systems love to build their own solution and things like that. And I, I've seen endless amount of friends just fail at it fail at it fail at it they all put thousands and thousands of dollars into it it works for like a couple weeks and then once something happens they have an algae explosion or whatever and just it's just dead but he's got a product about three grand that tank set up in there and it depends on how many additional grow boxes you go with um, but he builds it himself as an all voluntary uh farm it's uh, basically run as a mission this guy's been in 72 different countries he teaches people all over the world how to farm food and it's just absolutely incredible what you can do as far as food forests. So this is a tree, I can't pronounce this thing, but I'll let you guys read it. I'm getting, I'm get, I've got to get one of these things. The berries grow on the trunk and it looks super cool when it's like flush with berries, tons of mangoes, tons and tons of mangoes. Looks super, super cool. I just picked up a, a uh, Jamaican cherry. Sorry, I'm like all over the place. I just love this stuff. I just absolutely love this stuff. I've got a goal of being completely, like I, the more I learn about food, the more I don't want to buy food. Like I want to know what's in my food and I want it to be like as natural as possible. And so, yeah, anyway, sorry. Uh, my narration here on the video is kind of a little, little spotty, but I'll link to the, this particular nursery. Super cool concept. I would encourage traditional landscaper types. Like we're living in a time period, like this decade, next decade, where like domestic food production and the idea of spending excess money to maintain, maintain a beautiful green lawn that you put uh, synthetic colored fer uh, synthetic colored mulch in, and then you have all sorts of issues because you have dye in your soil and you're using synthetic chemicals and pesticides all for having a, a beautiful HOA green lawn. Like that's, it's, it's, I'm not a fan. <laughs> like I'm not a fan. Like growing a food forest and actually having stuff that heals people's bodies and doesn't cause pesticides and runoff and all those are like, that's the solution moving forward. It seems pretty obvious, but at this point in time it's early days but i would encourage you guys I'll also link to a guy named pete he has a, a youtube channel over probably over a quarter million subs at this point he's about 30 minutes from this location and uh and he was a traditional landscaper about seven years ago switched to all food forest edible landscape type of stuff and I mean, he's blown up. I mean, not. I mean, just his YouTube channel alone is a business in itself. But he's got a nursery. He's got an install thing, and it's just he's booked. I mean, he's literally six to nine months booked out. And I don't know a lot of landscapers 
that are that booked out or people are booking for next season on like, and big projects too, like ripping up, ripping up an entire landscape, getting it gone, like rip out number one, number two, bringing in a ton of, of organic material. Number three, bringing in all sorts of, of specialty rare plants that they're not price shopping. They're buying it because they want to have more sustainability or they want to have, uh, they don't want to worry about supply chain issues. They don't want to worry about inflation. They don't want to worry about fertilizer shortages. They just want to like, and they don't want to worry about get cancer and like all that other stuff that that goes on, but I would encourage you guys, exterior contractors, there's a lot of you in this audience, move to that side. There's a saying, you wanna be on the right side of history. And, and moving to edible landscapes and getting away from synthetic fertilizers, pesticides, uh, unnecessary city watering with, with, with chlorine in it, like getting away from that is, is being on the right side of history. And these are coconuts, I forgot. I need to, I need to back truck up on some coconuts gotta get some coconuts my buddy from new york i just convinced him to move down here he's coming down here this spring and he's like hey man can we grow coconuts down there i'm like i gotta get some of those i gotta get some of this so thanks for watching guys thanks for subscribing thanks for liking and as always i will uh, see you in the comments Peace.